Well, let's talk about that number one league of yours, the Premier League. We had the big North London Derby, man. Arsenal, Tottenham. Arsenal came out 3-2. Couple of refereeing decisions, though, that went their way. What do you let, let's talk about them? So they went up one nil, own goal. Yep. The second goal, though, couple potential air quote potential fouls that didn't go Tottenham's way. Arsenal go right down the field. Saka scores a goal. Also, fouls for you? before we before we get past that little scenario, there, what a okay. ball by Kai Havertz! What a ball! Was a good, great ball. Fantastic. Anyway, touch too. Continue. Maybe a little lucky first touch there for Saka. I don't know. We'll see. I, I think he got a little lucky with that first touch. I think he's but more lucky with the poor defending on him, letting him go to his left foot. So That's true. That is also true. <laughs> but were those fouls in the buildup for you? Which one do you want to start with? Well, I think there's the, the clipping that Trossard clips Kulisevsky's foot. Okay. And he you can start with that stumbles. one. All right. Yeah, I think that's the most obvious one. I think the tackle from Declan Rice on James Madison. Declan Rice gets the ball. I don't think it's Gabrielle. I think it is. I was Declan. And Saliba clips the back of him as Gabrielle's getting the ball. It was Matt. It was Declan. Okay. That won the ball. Okay. Well, no matter what, I got the I ball. think the Madison one. You're right. Kulisevsky one. I've heard so many people complain about this one and say. It's a foul. I don't think so, and let me tell you why. First off, he hits the ball too far out in front of him. So our the ball, essentially, it's him and Trossard going to the ball. So there's no one within the vicinity of the ball. He's also going away from goal. Kulisevsky cuts across Trossard. Trossard does not initiate the contact. I think Kulisevsky does. Hence why it's not a penalty. I've heard the question, if it was anywhere else on the field, would it be a foul? And I think because Kulisevsky cut across Trussard, I don't think it would have been a foul anywhere on the field. I think what also hurts Kulisevsky is he takes three steps. I agree. And I've heard people say, why don't you just go down? You get in the box, you get contact. Michael Oliver was right there. So So I'm going to ask you two questions then. The first one. If that happens to an Arsenal player, would you think it's a foul? Or is your Tottenham bias? Probably out? probably my bias during the match would say yes. During the match. And then watching it a couple more times, I probably would say no. Okay, so then that kind I of would leads feel, me to my second if question. If it was is, given, I would say it's really harsh. But then again, if it was given, I don't think VAR overturns it. So. so that's kind of my second question. If the referee gets sent to the monitor for a second look, does he give it? I I don't I don't think so. Michael Oliver. You don't was think too so? I think he was too. I close think he to gives that. it if he goes to the monitor on a second look. I I don't think so. I I don't get me wrong. I think if it if it's given as a foul, it's a very soft one. But we've seen him given. I don't think it would get overturned. But at the same time, I think if Michael Oliver goes to the monitor for a second look, he probably gives it. Hmm. Well, it's been very inconsistent this season. Whether those are fouls or not. We've seen it happen in multiple games, so I, it could have gone either way. I, it really could have. And it was just, this was a huge moment because this was. goes from Spurs getting a potential penalty to now being 2 nil down. In the span of what, 10 seconds? seconds? Yeah. It, Maybe. Just, it happens so quick, and it just completely changes the game for Spurs at least. Yeah. Who then goes I mean, down another goal after exactly. Kai Havertz scores yeah. off a corner. Oh, man. Yeah, and, you know, aside from the shouts for penalties, I think Spurs were really bad in this match. Really? I think, I think the scoreline flatters them. I mean, Arsenal handed them two goals. Handed them two goals. I mean, David Raya caught in two minds. That was awful. It was absolutely awful. And then Declan Rice not looking over his shoulder and essentially kicking, I forget who it was, whether it was Madison or Chris. Yeah, Ben Davis. kicks him in the nuts. I felt yeah, so bad for up. Ben Davis. <laughs> oh, my God. I watched, they showed it like six times on replay, and every single time, my groin hurt worse and worse and worse. 
So interesting, though, the ref had to go to the monitor for a second look at that one to give that penalty. Yeah. Didn't and see the, it live. He, well, the crazy thing is he did see it, but he was on the he was in other a good side. He was in a great position because you see in the replay, he's standing right there. Yeah, right but, behind the action. But I think it's because of the angle he had, right? Because he's on the other side of Ben Davis. That's why he didn't see it. And I mean, he went to the monitor and literally saw one look of it, like barely stopped turns around and calls a penalty. So, yeah. Yeah. I Mickey Van penalty, Deven, right? Mickey Van Deven also had a goal taken back due to offsides just by oh. literally Gabrielle's butt cheeks, man. Like <laughs> yeah, he literally. sucked him in to keep <laughs> to get him offside. <laughs> really though. He like, did a little butt butt clench and whoop, bleh, put him offside. <laughs> right when the ball was kicked. Yeah. So you're well, overall... I don't I don't know if it's because he thought Vanderven was offsides, or because he thought he was onside, so he, his butt clenched. So, so I, I, I'm, I I disagree with you. I think Tottenham played well. They controlled the game for the most part. Like going in at halftime, I was like, "How is this three nil? How have they? I mean, it's set pieces. That's why it was three nil. They conceded yeah. on a couple corners, but honestly, they controlled the game, had the possession. They just couldn't do anything with the ball." And that's why I say they didn't play well because Arsenal were happy to just sit there and say, "Hey, score on us." And it was, and it was, that was. It wasn't for Arteta two mistakes. Came out with a different match plan for for this game. Yeah, and if it wasn't for the, that all out attack, if it wasn't for the two mistakes. I don't think Spurs score in this game at all. Because they, what did they create in this match, shot wise? I know there was the Romero header that hit the bar. And that was it. James Madison was non-existent in this match. <laughs> That's why he got subbed off. <laughs> yeah. He was non-existent. Romero was their biggest threat. Yeah. Mickey Vanderven got a goal. Right? He was the one that... Right, yeah, he scored it. the offside. No, Romero uh, scored the one. Okay. Well, yeah, then there you go. Romero was their only threat. But, yeah, I just... I don't... I think... I think if Arsenal didn't give them two goals... I think Arsenal probably scores more, to be honest with you. I mean, Spurs were – that was the worst I've ever seen a team defend set play, like the whole match. Every single time Arsenal got a set piece, you're like, eh, they're going to score. Well, in the first half, I, we saw Ben White just having his way with Vicario. Oh, the dark arts of Ben White, man. That was the most fun I've ever had watching a player mess with a goalie. Trying to take That's, his glove off. That, that was, was hilarious. brilliant. I will say the second half, they changed it up. Basuma came in and was marking Ben White then. Because Ben White was kind of just having his way with Vicario. Yeah. But then they brought in Basuma to try to contain Ben White. <laughs> yeah. I, I Again, I don't even know why Basuma was on the bench. Unless he's coming off an injury, which I don't remember him doing. So, And then, yeah, I mean... For Arsenal, Thomas Partey being back, you can see how much that they benefited from that. And then I just think Arsenal rubbed the floor with Tottenham. And well, then rubbed the floor wrong. with themselves at the same time. So Arsenal's biggest threat was Arsenal in this game. It really I mean, was. It keeps them top of the Premier League by, by a hair. By a hair. Which is crazy because they could win out all these games and still not still lose be the champions. Title. Yeah, and we'll get to that here in a second. But first, I want to talk about Spurs. Okay. Because I know we've both heaped a lot of praise on Big Ange. At the beginning but why of the is season, no one yeah. talking about him not having a single plan B? I mean, this second half of the season, they've been awful. What are you talking about, man? Everyone's talking about him not having a plan B. And they've now, been talking about that now. since the Chelsea game. Where he died from that high line because he does have no plan B. He just has his one way, and that's the way they're going to play. Everyone's yeah. talking about it, man. We've been talking about it for months. Sorry. Why is nobody talking about it more? Because in the Premier League, you play, you got a, a Luton who is, you know, high press, high attack, not great in defense. And then you play a Everton who's going to sit back on you the whole time. And you'll play a Brighton who's going to fly at you at all at all times during a match. And then you have Chelsea, who knows what they're going to do match to match. Same with Man United. And you play a City, who's going to have the ball the whole time, but play it sideways a lot. You got to have more than one way to play 
they only seem to have one. Yeah, we know. Duh. <laughs> Okay. You new to no. watching Tottenham, man? No. I mean, it's been this way for... I mean, that's why they died at the Sword of Newcastle the week before. Newcastle put, like, four by them. I guess I guess what I'm trying to ask is, do we give too much credit to this Spurs side? And Ange Foster When have we been giving credit to the Spurs side since they... Since January? Have we given any credit to them? Well, I mean, you picked them to finish in the top four. I did. Above Villa. It looks like it's pretty much not going to happen at this point. I, yeah, it's looking slim. I mean, I hope it goes down to the last week of the season so they have something to play for against City, but they lose two games and they're they're out pretty much. And so, yeah, they're tough games. They have to go to Anfield. And then yeah, the that Man City game. But I think they can beat Chelsea. They can beat Burnley. And they can beat Sheffield. So, yeah. I mean, we'll see. I mean, Chelsea rubbed the floor with them last time out. So, we'll see what happens midweek. And then they play Liverpool. They? If they... I don't remember that game. Didn't they? Wasn't it like 5-2, to two, something like that? A bunch of, know, couple man. of red cards? Oh, uh, yeah, it was 4-1. to one. There you go. That red, The red cards, you're right. So... Uh, that game could go any way. They lose that game, they lose Liverpool, they have nothing to play for for the rest of the season. So that City game could be, yeah, whatever, we got one thing to play for, and it's to make sure Arsenal lose the league. That would be it. So, But they could also beat Chelsea, yeah. draw Liverpool, beat Burnley, and then have something to play for against yeah. City. Which leads me into my next question, is will they be able to catch Villa? Because Villa don't have an easy schedule either probably not just because it's a i mean even with their games in hand they'll still if they win both their games in hand they'll still be a point behind which if they win think, if they win no. both their games in hand i will be happy for them to finish fourth because that means arsenal win the title so i will be happy do i think it's going to happen i i hope but I don't think so. I mean, Villa, their schedule is not easy either. I mean, they go to Brighton, they host Liverpool, and then they got Crystal Palace. But then they're also still in the Europa League. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah, the European Conference League. Or European Conference League, sorry. Yeah, so, yeah. It's not an easy schedule, but you can see them, you know, they could. Brighton's been so bad, it's hard for me to say they're going to drop points there. Liverpool, I could see it. Palace has been playing really Kristen good Palace lately. Palace has been playing well lately. Yeah. yeah. So I don't. I don't know. It could go any which way. It's going to be exciting. Liverpool pretty much have secured third place at this point. So it's what everybody you, sandwiching them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Last one. Kai Havertz. And we've talked about him a lot this season. Yet another game-winning goal and an assist that at the time would have won them the match as well but like as far as money spent on him is he a signing of the season or should be in the discussion for it no why not because the signing of the season plays well the whole season okay cole is cole palmer in the discussion yeah, for cole signing Palmer's of the season better. declan rice has been a better signing i disagree about cole palmer him and Kai Havertz have the disagree. same. They have the same amount of goals in open play, with eleven. That's how many penalties Cole Palmer has scored this season. Yeah, but you also have to look at the context. Context matters in this. I mean, yeah, Cole Palmer's got twenty goals, nine assists. What does Kai Havertz have? I think it's twelve and six. I'm not mistaken. It might be 12 and 5. I think it is. Yeah, 12 and 6. So, I'm Cole just Palmer's saying value for money. I'm not less. saying he's I'm not saying he's signing the season. I'm just saying You just he said be, player of the season. I said should he be in the conversation of signing of the season? I think Declan Rice is signing of the season. I do not think Kai Havertz I, or Callister I would Palmer. put over Kai Havertz. Value below. for money? Yes, but again, McAllister hasn't performed week in and week out all season. 
He was also half as much as Kai Havertz cost. Yes, and he was, what, what is that, a third of Declan Rice? But that's how good Declan Rice has been this season for me. Anyways, that's the discussion about signing of the season. I think he should be in the same conversation as Cole Palmer if Cole Palmer's in for signing of the season. That's all I'm saying. Disagree. Cole Palmer is definitely in the discussion for signing of the season. Kai Havertz, I don't think is. I do not rate penalties as highly as you, apparently. Hell, apparently you haven't taken very many, man. Because they're pressure. I've taken those, a lot. Some of these big pressure games, yeah. I've taken a lot. Especially for a young teenager like that. Or I guess he's not a teenager. He's 21, but still very young. In, in football terms, that's a teenager, essentially. And in, a lot of them are game winners, too. And the last minutes of some of these games. I'm just saying. Kai Havertz deserves more respect on his name for value of money. He does. Cole I, Palmer. Again, I don't think he did. I will say he ha- deserves more respect for what he's done lately, but he also didn't do shit from September to January. And I don't think you can disagree with me on that. No, I I'm not disagreeing with you, but he also didn't play much. He played a lot. What are you, what are you talking about, man? He was starting all these games. You gotta let me finish. He's played 34 games. How has Gotta he not let played me finish. a lot? Gotta He's let me played finish. in all but one game. Let me finish. No, you don't need to finish. He's played let in every finish. game but one. Let me finish. At striker. That was the rest of my sentence. Well, he didn't do shit in midfield, that's for sure. But yes, yes since he got moved he's to striker, he has he's not a better. midfielder. He's not a midfielder. I don't care Apparently, what anyone Mikel says. Arteta thought he was he's a midfielder. He's not a midfielder. He's not. Maybe as a false nine, if you consider that a midfielder, but he's not. A I midfielder. don't. Yeah. I don't either. So, anyways, we spent enough time on this topic. You guys, let us know down below in the comments. <laughs> yes, Sky Havertz a signing of the season. It's not what I said, but okay. In the conversation. It's not what I said. Value for money, whatever you said. I said, should he be in the conversation? <laughs> So anyways, thank you for joining us for our 100th episode. Targo, happy birthday, my friend. Thank you, sir. As always, this has been wonderful. Thank you all for listening along. Make sure you check us out on Instagram at Bruise FC, TikTok, Bruise Banter FC. Make sure you are liking, subscribing, hit that notification bell. Check out Acorn Hills. Use the code Bruise. 25 for 25% off and make sure you check out Redbubble because we got some pretty sweet merch as Targo just showed you there. But till next time, my friends, thank you for we being here for you. the first 100. Here's Woo! to 100 more. We love Cheers. you. Happy St. Totterham's Day.